Who here has ever felt stuck? You know, unhappy and like nothing will ever change. Take a moment to reflect on your life and the places where you feel stuck. Maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's work, maybe it's that big dream you still haven't gotten around to. What if I told you that whatever it is, you have the power to solve it? Would you believe me? The recipe is simple. Small choices lead to small actions, lead to big changes. Let me show you how. See, five years ago, I was a mess. I was sitting huddled on my bathroom floor, and tears were dripping from my face. I felt so alone and helpless, I thought I would die. And it's not that I wanted to end anything. It's just I couldn't see how to move forward. I was constantly having panic attacks and belly aches, and I hated my PhD. And I probably hadn't gotten a single letter added to the thesis in two months. And then I had an epiphany. Choirs of angels sang down from heaven, and instantly I turned into the hot, ambitious woman you see here today. <laughs> and for only $19.99, you can buy the secret today. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, that's not really what happened. <laughs> But it did turn out to be a defining moment. You see, the way that being stuck showed up for me was an anxiety disorder, basically a classic burnout. Anxiety is focused on undefined fears and worries about the future. My particular worries were that people would find out what a fraud I am. They'd figure out I'm not as nice, not as smart, and not as ambitious as I had led them to believe. Then they would hate me. And when the big disaster would finally come, I'd be all alone. And then I would die. My only hope, my only hope for survival was that I would meet and exceed every unspoken expectation that people had of me. And you might ask, Paula, how did you know about these unspoken expectations? Simple. I just listened to that part of me, the perfectionist, who was really harsh and knew exactly what I needed to do. And I swear it made total sense on the inside. Now, for you, being stuck will show up in different ways. You might be depressive, you might get angry, or you might try to numb yourself to whatever it is that you're stuck on. Human brains are really good at avoiding what is uncomfortable. Most likely, you just convinced yourself that whatever it is, that's just the way it is. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it will always be. Now, I'll tell you this right now, there is no magic bullet and no secret to instant success. There is my story of how I changed my life and a process that you can follow to get unstuck wherever you are. So. I was sitting on my bathroom floor, and I was thinking, I don't want this. And I thought this for a long time. But now this bolt of insight struck, and I realized it doesn't have to be this way. And as, epiph as epiphanies go, this one was kind of obvious. Not only did it not have to be this way, there were literally a million other options. It wasn't big, but this inside opened up for me a space to choose. Now, like me five years ago, more than one out of ten people suffers from anxiety or burnout. That could be you, you, maybe it's you. Burnout happens when you keep pouring your energy into something that fails to nourish you in return. So whatever it is that feeds your soul, whether it's recognition or joy or fun, if you're doing all the things, the things you have to do, the things that you should do, the things that are expected of you, and you're not getting that, if your life is filled doing work that doesn't align with your values or your vision, you'll burn out. Now, some of you are in that place, and some of you have been there. And I know that place. But even if you're lucky, and you have no experience of what I'm talking about, 
Take a look at your life. Is it feeding your soul? You know, I hadn't really done anything extraordinary to get, you know, to that place on the bathroom floor. I just followed expectations and trusted others to know better. Through no fault of my own, and I don't mean this in a good way, I had gotten into a life that didn't fit me. The world felt hostile, and even my worldview failed to support me in this time of crisis. And many of us experience that exact same pressure day to day. And the only difference between the ones who crack and the ones who don't is a fluctuation in brain chemistry here or there. There is a difference, though, between the people who thrive and the ones who are just lucky their brain chemistry hasn't tipped yet. The ones who thrive know how to choose. They step into a place of choosing and then they take action to create the life they want. Now, once you start questioning the have to, you have options. And then you make your first choice, and then you take action. My first choice was to get off the bathroom floor. And it took me another two weeks to actually decide what I was going to do next. I chose to get support. Turns out things are actually easier when you're not alone. So I found support with therapists, with coaches, with friends and in online groups. Wherever there was an atmosphere of growth. And slowly I learned to make decisions again. Yes, this, not that. Do this, don't do that. The moment of choice, the what if, is a light that shines on a thousand worlds of possibility. Where you choose, you are free. Where you choose, you have the power to create reality. Now, power and freedom aren't always easy or fun or even comfortable. It can be really, really hard. So in the beginning, when you're just learning to make choices again, your choices will be small. You start with simple things. Like I started with deciding what to have for lunch. And then you go on to bigger things. And each day you go, you go all the way to the edge of what is comfortable. And then you take a step forward. And you make a choice. It's like learning to lift weights. You start small, and then you work your way up. And even if you think small is silly and you should be able to lift like the big boys, you still start small. So, whatever the challenge is that you want to solve, start right at the edge of comfort. Talk to someone who knows more. Invest an hour here or there to learn, to build. The important thing is to choose and then to commit to doing. And to expand your circle of comfort. Now, as you get really good at choosing, your light becomes brighter and brighter. You see more options and you see bigger consequences. And you, by practicing choosing, you become willing to take bigger risks. Now, I wish I could say that even if it wasn't instantaneous, at least it was a linear path from anxious to this stage. It's not. It took a lot of trial and error. It was trying things to th see whether I wanted them or not. Because I really had no idea what I wanted. Be it how to live, how to work, or how to be in a relationship. And not just that, time and again I fell back into old patterns of thinking and doing. See, most of our choices are automatic, habits. We do what we've always done. And we like to follow the path of least resistance which is why we follow others. We follow the email with that's urgent. We follow the friend who likes to party all weekend. We follow that blog post with a perfect productivity system. And it took me a, a three, full three years to finally admit that my PhD was not getting done. I kept prioritizing my family's wishes because their approval had been valued for so long above my own desires. And that's okay. It's okay that it took me so long, and it's okay if you need time to learn this too. 
See, with each turn, with each recommitment to choosing, I learned more about how I work and what I want to do in the world. Now, life is no longer about fulfilling unex unspoken expectations, but it's about living joyfully and helping other people achieve their big dreams. As you learn more about what works for you and your challenge, you also learn more about what you want. You learn about the relationships you want to have and the work you want to do. You'll learn why you want to do things. Because, you see, each problem you perceive comes from a dissonance between what is and what should be. When you see a relationship with constant bickering and fighting, you imagine a relationship that supports mutual growth. You see burnout and you imagine work that actually feeds your soul. Now, you probably won't solve these challenges today, but you do have the power for change. You see, small choices lead to small actions. You keep seeing that your choices lead to good things and you will trust your choices more. You keep seeing that you're fine no matter what the outcomes are, and you become willing to take bigger risks. And then your choices become bigger. Now, when you step into that place of choosing, you find freedom and power. The freedom to choose what your life will look like and the power to create it. Now, I'm going to turn a little motivational speaker on you for a moment, and we're going to do a little exercise. Right at the beginning, I asked you to uh, think of a challenge you were having, and you probably have one in mind anyway. You can even close your eyes if you want to. And just think of this challenge for a moment. And then try to visualize the options you have. Now remember, we're thinking small choices, small actions. And if you don't know how small, think tiny. Tiny, okay? Now choose one option you can do by the end of the week. Are you ready? Okay. Now turn to the person next to you. You're going to promise them that you're going to do this thing by the end of the week. Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> we still have about 30 seconds for you to find yours. But for a moment. You don't, really, you don't necessarily have to tell the other person, but you're promising. You're going to look them in the eye, and you're going to shake their hands on it. Ready? Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you.